let's identify some raptors. So this first bird here, the first thing that stands out to me is how pointed the wings are. So right away I'm thinking that this is probably a falcon. And there's two other really distinctive things. Number one, the tail. It's kind of an orangish brown tail with a lot of thin striping on it. And also the underside of the body, this breast area has a lot of vertical streaking. And we can also look at the facial pattern. Although with the photo being overexposed here, it's a little hard to tell, but it looks like it has a bit of a sideburn, which is another good field mark for falcons. So putting all of these field marks together, I know that this is a female American kestrel. Here we have two birds, and the first thing I want to look at is, are they both the same species? And I would say yes, because they're the exact same shape, exact same plumage. So these are both the same species, and they appear to be some kind of vulture. So we have two options, turkey vulture or black vulture. If we look at the wingtips, we see that the white is only here at the wingtip, not the entire trailing edge of the wing. If we look at the tails, we see that they're very short and triangular. It's almost straight across at the tip rather than being more rounded. And the heads look somewhat dark. That's uh, maybe a supporting feature, but that can be tough to tell from a distance. But taking those field marks into consideration, just with the overall stocky shape, short tails, white only at the wingtips, we know that these are both black vultures. This next bird is kind of that classic hawk silhouette. So I'm thinking it's in the Budeo genus because the tail isn't super long like we would see in an exhibitor. Let's look at a couple things. First of all, the wingtips are a little pointy looking. If we count how many feathers make up the wingtips, we see one, two, three, four. So that's an important point to keep in mind. We look at the tail pattern, we see that there's this one broad white stripe, and there's also a couple thinner white stripes that you can't see, especially from a distance. From a distance, we would just see this one broad white band would be the most obvious. So let's keep that in mind. And also the underside of the body we see is kind of a horizontal brown barring. So let's consider what are the, what are the beauty is that we might be considering? Red-tailed hawk, red-shouldered hawk, and broad-winged hawk. So first of all, we said, we said the wingtip was only four feathers. We can actually use that to roll out red-tailed hawk and red-shouldered hawk. Also the tail pattern, adult red-shouldered hawks have a similar tail pattern to this, but they would have thin white bands, not a thick white band like we see here. And we know that this is an adult broad-winged hawk, which is also supported by the brown barring on the breast of the bird. This next bird looks like it's big and dark, so that usually narrows things down to either vultures or eagles. And if we look at where there's white here in the wings and the base of the tail, we know that vultures don't show that. So we know that this is an eagle, so either a bald eagle or a golden eagle. And to separate the two, there's two main things we're going to look at. One is the size of the head. Bald eagles have big heads and golden eagles have small heads. So if we look at the size of the head on this bird, especially compared to the size of the tail, the head looks extremely small. So that's one thing in favor of leaning towards golden eagle. Let's look at where the white patches are. We see that the white patches are here in what I would call the center of the wings, right? We're not seeing any white patches here in the wing pit area. It's not just real splotchy underneath, it's more organized white patches. Although on this individual bird, they're not the most organized. Um, it looks like maybe there's been some feathers replaced here in the middle of the white patches, kind of breaking them up. But overall, it's more of an organized white patch in each wing, and especially the tail, just a very white base to the tail. So taking those two factors into consideration, the small head, plus the three white patches, right, one on each wing and the base of the tail, we can call this an immature golden eagle. Okay, for this next bird, a couple things jump out to me right away. First of all, look how pointed that wing is. So right away, we should be thinking falcon on this. In the facial pattern, again, same thing. This is classic falcon with this kind of blue sideburn that comes down. Another thing we can take a look at is 
what it's carrying. It's carrying a pigeon, which is a fairly large bird, fairly large prey. So we get the impression that this bird is also quite large. When we're talking about falcons, we have three different species. We have two small falcons, which are the American kestrel and the merlin. And then we have our one big falcon, which is the peregrine falcon, which this bird is a peregrine falcon. And judging by the um, patterning here on the breast, we know that this is an adult peregrine falcon. And the last one for today, here we have a bird that's just overall kind of plain and light underneath. So I'm thinking this is another hawk. And I'm thinking that this is another Budio because the tail is relatively long, but it's not that super long tail that we see on exhibitors such as Cooper's hawks and sharp shinned hawks. So I'm thinking this is another Budio. Now, one thing we can look at is the wingtip. We talked about on the broad winged hawk, they have more of a pointed wingtip. This bird, however, the wingtip looks more rounded or squared off. It's more of a blunt wingtip. And we can't really count the individual feathers to tell if it's four or five, but we're not getting that pointed impression. Also, look here, just in from the wingtip, we see these translucent crescents where the sunshine is shining through. It's kind of a banana shape. Those are a really good field mark for red-shouldered hawks. And both adults and juvenile red-shouldered hawks show that. Now this bird is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. We know it's not an adult because the adult would have a different tail pattern, more of a dark tail with thin white lines like chalk lines on a blackboard. And also adults would have more orangish tones underneath. So we know that this is a juvenile just because of how plain it is. But the main giveaway to identify a red-shouldered hawk versus a broad-winged hawk at a distance is that the red-shouldered hawks have more blunt wingtips with the translucent crescents. This is David Brown from Lyco Birds. Thanks for watching.